this video will give you a preview of what you can expect from the COTSIS basic training course on Be Educated. You can find Be Educated under www.be-educated.net. Note that the interface supports different languages. Enter your personal login. The dashboard provides direct access to the main areas of the learning management system. You can resume from where you left last time, access the courses you are enrolled in, check all the courses available, and you also have direct access to all messages the system sent, you can contact support, and log out. Additional functionality is available from the drop-down menu on the top right-hand side. The catalog displays the list of available training courses and technologies. We want to have a look at Kotsis. The Kotsis basic training course targets automation engineers either new to PLC programming, IEC 611313, or Kotsis technologies. Engineers familiar with a different programming tool or having used Ladder in the past will find this training very suitable. By going through this course, you will learn IEC 611313 as well as how CodeSys works. You will receive detailed information in the most important features of CodeSys in six topics. Introduction to IEC 611313 and CodeSys. Language editors. Restructured text. Instruction list. Continuous function chart. Ladder diagram. Function block diagram. And sequential function chart. You will then cover the project structure with repositories, libraries, tasks, programs, function blocks, functions, variables, and data types. The course will then guide you through creating and configuring visualization masks. The communication topic will cover the configuration of the CodeSys gateway and of local IOs, and will cover two of the most used field bus protocols that are CanOpen and EtherCAT. And last but not least, you will learn monitoring and debugging in CodeSys with monitoring, writing and forcing, trace configuration, breakpoints and online changes. We have built this course in a modular way allowing learning modules of no more than one hour. Note that you are free in the learning path you want to take, you do not have to go through the topics, chapters and lessons in the same order as provided here. We want to give you an insight in the CodeSys basic training course, for that, we will launch the module Arrays under the topic Project Structure and Chapter Data Types. The navigation pane allows you to restart from the beginning, start pause, go backwards, forward, speed up the lecture, turn the audio on and off, add subtitles and access the table of contents. Now. Let's listen to our trainer for a few minutes of theory. What is an array? An array is used to store a matrix of data. It's an index set of related elements that can be arranged in one, two, or three dimensions. The image to the left demonstrates the logical structure of a three-dimension array. Each of the smaller cubes represents an element of the array. Each of the elements of the array are of the same data type. This is an important attribute of an array and serves to distinguish it from a structure which can contain multiple different data types. The elements of an array can contain either elemental or derived data types. An example of an array of an elemental data type would be an array of integers. An example of array of derived data types would be an array of structures. We'll be discussing and demonstrating both of these array variants in some detail in this module. Due to its index structure, the individual elements of an array can be addressed independently. The array data can be arranged to mirror the physical reality represented by the logical model. You'll see and create examples of that concept in this module. One-dimension arrays are less common than their two-dimension counterparts, but are used in many applications. Here you see a single-dimension array with six elements indexed 1 through 6. Thus, we say the boundaries of the array are bracketed 1 dot dot 6. You'll soon discover that IEC 611.31-3 doesn't restrict you to zero-based or even one-based indexing. 
In other words, this array could easily have been indexed as elements 5 through 10. The element highlighted in blue is addressed as element bracketed 3. Any physical system that has a single dimension can be modeled using a one-dimension array. An example might be an array of Boole data type that contained the safe-unsafe state of multiple stations on a linear assembly line. Here is a one-dimension array of tanks. Data for each tank could be represented by a data structure and organized into this array. This would represent one row of tanks in our tank farm. Two-dimension arrays are very common. This figure depicts such an array. Notice that the index now has two dimensions as well. The first index represents the data column. The second index represents the data row. The boundaries of this array are bracketed 1.4 comma 1.6. Using this indexing scheme, the element highlighted here in blue would be row 2 column 3 or bracketed 2 comma 3. This is how we'll use the indices to address specific elements within the array. Any system that has a row and column configuration can be modeled logically using a two-dimension array. After theory, you're invited to follow demonstration in the software. Let's have a look for a few minutes. Okay, so I've gone ahead and saved this project and I'm going to go online with it. There we go. Okay, so what you're looking at is the online view of PLCPRG. And you're looking at the declaration section. There isn't anything in the code body yet, but I simply want to look at the declaration section to look at this array of tank farm data that we created. And there we go. Here's the dimensions of each member. So here's the first, uh, the first tank in the first row in the first farm, the second tank in the first row in the first farm, etc., etc. That's why I said it's so important to know the order of this because when we get to initialization, they're going to be initialized in this order. So this is the first opportunity to show you that online. Now, if I say, well, I want to see what the tank data is of this first tank. I open that up and there it is. There's my tank number. Now, none of this is gone past the initialization state, I could prepare a value um, over here and then put that in each one. Or I could have uh, code that does that. But let's look at some of these initializations. Okay, so we're initialized with the uh, last fill date and time is initialized to 2015, January 1st at uh, 12 noon. Okay, so we've um, not done anything yet with that. Here's that valve state. Um, both the fill valve and the drain valve by default are closed. And that information is coming from the actual tank data. When we go and look at that, those are the initialization values, what we call base level initialization, that have occurred uh, down here at the level. We know that uh, the fuel type for all of the tanks is going to be none. We say, well, how do we know the valve state? Well, if we go look at the valve state, we know that the uh, default valve state, because it's an enumeration, if we don't specifically um, initialize that member, it'll initialize to its lowest number, which is zero, which is closed, and it did that. Um, and then also we'll look and see what is the uh, tank position, because it says by default that's been initialized to uh, one, one, so row one, tank one. So let's see if that's in fact the case. So we go back to our PLC PRG and let's say here's our tank position and it doesn't have anything there. That's because it is itself a um, larger member. It's an array of two values. And so there we see the two values, uh, one, one that it was initialized to. Once theory and video have been reviewed, the learner goes through examination. Note that a minimum of 75% of correct answers are required to receive a certificate. True or false. In multidimensional arrays, the first dimension will always be the farthest to the left in the declaration, as in this example. This statement is true.
Check the one selection that lists the location where an array cannot be declared. True or false. If a structure is to be included in an array, all of its members must be of the same data type. And for the learner to control his skills after theory, demonstration and quizzes, he has the possibility to go through some exercises described in a specification document. And the results can be checked on the solution module. Let's have a look at such a module. This exercise challenges you to create a three-dimensional array of a data structure that in turn contains another data structure. If you want to take it further, you can create a visualization to interface with your data and logic to initialize the array. Your client is WindWorks Incorporated. WindWorks is a wind energy company providing management services for states and municipalities. They need you to develop an array of structured data that will allow the management of one of their wind enterprises. The system has four farms with 30 windmills in each farm arranged in five rows and six columns. The data they need from each tower includes hub velocity, blade pitch, tower name, and position. The hub velocity is a monitored, real-time value that can also be used to set a maximum hub velocity for that tower if needed. The blade pitch can also be both monitored and controlled from the SCADA system with which your program will interface. The client also needs to be able to designate windmills that are offline by changing the name in the HMI. Again, your base mission is the creation of a three-dimension array, but if you want to meet the additional challenge, WindWorks has offered a generous bonus. You're invited to reference the project design specifications for details of this project. This video examines one approach for completing the exercise. Don't watch it if you want to tackle the exercise without help. As always, there are many paths to a functional solution. Your route may differ and is likely as good or better than the one offered here. Learning courses online is possible thanks to Be Educated. Learn more today at www.b-services.net slash education or get started at www.b-educated.net. Thank you.